My name is Jim Buckhorn. I grew up around Pumpkin Hollow on the Illinois River. Uh, my mom was a Michael Moore, and uh, her name was Bessie, and my dad was Sunday Buckhorn. And he grew up uh, north of us, up toward uh, Flat Rocks in the Illinois River. We had to draw water. I had to cut wood with that crosscut saw. That's what we used, you know, crosscut saw. And a lot of time I just used an ax to chop the small one for our stove, cook stove. What kind of house did y'all live in? Lumber house. Boy, sometimes when it snowed, that flakes would be coming off that ceiling. That snow would come in. Next time, when you wake up next morning, you'd have snow on your face. We did. That's how we lived. And mom would get a, uh, uh, she'd bum a um, newspaper, I don't know where she got them at. Then she'd take a flower, put it on water, put it on there, paste it on that wall. That was our insulation. Oh, did you have to walk to school? Yep, we did lots of time, yeah. It's just about three and a half miles from there, from the house, yeah. And sometimes we'd be in the snow about that deep. See, back then, that snow would snow quite a bit back then. Ooh, that was rough. That was rough. Because we'd, uh, and me and my sister, and I got another one, we'd uh, just step in one place all the way, all the way home. Because that snow would be almost knee deep, you know. Mm -hmm. Some places, then sometimes school would be closed, and we'd walk up and we had to come back. Yeah, since there was no phone, you can call nobody. There was no phone or anything like that. When we were in school, there was no English. All it, all, all it was to us was Cherokee. That's all we knew. Sometime, me and my sister, we'd get busted for talking Cherokee. They wouldn't let us speak in, in our own language, you know. It's always had to be English, you know. They would stand us in the corner for talking Cherokee. The thing that I would use was spools, a thread. I used them and drive a nail in them and a piece of board, you know. Then I put a little flat piece and another little piece, nail it on there, that's to, to roll the uh, car around. I call it a car, but it was just a board. Well, the only thing we, I played was just, uh, really it was uh, wrestling and boxing. Because we had a school that where we went, they would let us, you know, fight for about two minutes a round. There's just only three rims around, that's six minutes, you know. Over at Oakdale, uh, that, uh, he was a veteran teacher, what he was, and that's what he would teach us, how to box or wrestling or something like that. Then later on when I turned 12, I started, uh, started making my own little bitty bows and arrows, and I'm still doing it now. I used to uh, watch my grandpa when he was uh, making them bows, and I learned as I, as, as I grow, you know. He just said, do this and do, do that. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. That's what he would tell me. I said, okay, Grandpa. I said, how you do it then? He said, here. Boy, he'd go like that, quit on that wood, say, you got to do this, you got to do that. <laughs> Man, sometimes I'd walk off, then I'd come back. I said, don't do that if you want to learn. Just watch what I'm doing. You'll be, you'll be making bows one of these days, which it came true. I didn't use 22, a shotgun. I always used my little bow that I had that I make. See, back then, uh, there wasn't no law, hardly at all, no kind, when I was growing up. And I'd just take a little bitty bow, and I would uh, go underneath the trees. I was about 12, 13 years old, you know, and I would kill them robins. Once I get nine or 12 of them, then I'd take them home. Mom said, boy, we're going to have some dumplings. We're going to have some fried bird. Sure enough, that's what we ate. And they were good. That's what I used to do. I used to just hunt around and around there, and then I'd go up the hillside and uh, try to kill some squirrels, you know. It was just a good, good time. I used to have a softball, like that big, and I'd throw it way out there and I'd shoot it. Every hit, the air would just bounce off, you know. Then take another step or two and just follow that ball around with that bow, shooting. And that's how I learned my really good shooting was uh, chasing that softball. See, my dad, he had a logging truck, big truck, not a little one, it was a big truck. And that's why we rode. Everywhere we went, we'd go to church, we'd ride that big logging truck. And hard to get on, too, because it was way taller than I was. Yeah, but because nobody had nothing. The best I can remember, too, another thing. Nobody had TV, no electric, down that Illinois River. Could be around 58, I guess, or 59. They find the electric water. They run it through all the way toward Goat Bluff, up to Goat Bluff, and uh, then, my mom, they found a TV somewhere, I don't know where it was at, 
They paid only, I think it was only 750. Boy, with Watts and Long Ranger and uh, Roy Rogers and all Lamb, you know. Boy, everybody would would be around that TV watching a, a movie. Boy, that was something. Sometimes they would stay there till around midnight watching TV. Sometimes we would have to go to sleep, then go to school the next day. What was it like to come to town? I bet that was a big... It was the greatest thing we ever seen. Yeah. Then, they used to have a little place, I guess that was Opal Cafe back then, you know, a little bitty deal over there. They had a hot dog stand, I guess you call that. We'd go over there, God, we'd go crazy. <laughs> Man, we eat a hot dog. First thing we did, we got, got to school next, uh, Monday morning. I said, boy, we went to Opal who ate some hot dogs. You know, they were just little bitty thing. <laughs> but that was something back then, you know, see something like that, you know. Because we never went nowhere, hardly except church. We played the softball, and then, then we throw that ball above the roof. Yeah, they'd catch it on the other side. Something like that, you know, we played that. Then we, uh, and a lot of times, there'd be about four or five other kids. I mean, they came down there all the time, you know, just to eat, you know, which that was good, because Mom was ready to cook for people, you know. And boy, I mean, we'd have company all the time. And anyway, that uh, we, uh, be sitting there, and all that one, one of them slap it somebody in the back. Boy, they start chasing. <laughs> they'd come in, they'd come down, and play music, you know. My, all my uncles, they played fiddles, guitar, something like that, you know. Every Friday night, somebody would stop. Then there'd be another one stopping. Then they'd bring a guitar, and they'd sit right there in that front porch. They'd be lying there with like turtles. <laughs> Yeah, they sure did. That's just uh, flat rocks. That's where we used to swim. Yeah, cause see, we used to dive off at high bluff, all the way down the bottom. Man, sometimes we try to touch the bottom. The deeper you go, the darker it gets. Yeah, we had a lot of crawdads. Yeah, we sure did. We fished a lot too. That's one thing in summertime. Yeah, my mom was a great fisherman. I know that much. She she'd uh, catch some red horse, but like that, but that long. Uh, I mean, I don't know wherever she caught fish. She said, do this. I said, like, what's that? Well, she grabbed it hook like that with her tongue, and she threw it in there. She always caught something. Eating our food, that's what we got, you know. Fish, crawdads, rabbits, squirrels. Just something like that, you know, that, that was our meal. Yeah, that was our meal, you know, whatever we got, you know. Then one time, <laughs> Mom got smart and said, you know what, we're going to get smart this time. We ain't going to eat no more squirrels for a while. I said, how come? I said, see this paper? I said, yeah. I want to have your aunt, your aunt fill this out for me. Sure enough, two weeks later, man, we got a hundred chickens. Little bitty baby chicks, right like that. Boy, it's time to butcher them chickens. I said, okay. And she just take a knife. You know, to, to take the skin off of them. Instead of leave the skin on, she would peel them. Peel them chickens, yeah. That way, that you're down to the meat. There ain't no skin on it, you know. Mm -hmm. See, back then, there was no money to buy toys with. Because I remember, right here, where we at here, in this courthouse, there wasn't nothing here except that courthouse. And this year wasn't here either, the gazebo. But that water fountain was there. That's the best, best I can remember back then. And uh, that Heinz apartment store, and across the street, that's all it was. But here, there wasn't much. Wasn't nothing here. And back then, I'm seeing some with the hitching post where they tied their horses, you know, a wagon. It was like that right here, all the way down. What I seen, woo wee. Now, there ain't no way I could live the way we did. There ain't no way, because, I mean, it's different, you know. Today, right now, it's so easy. You can just turn around, walk across the street, you can get whatever you want to eat, you know.